Welcome to Highline BI348 class video number 22. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI348 chapter 2 start or the finished file, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here about geometric mean, which is a way to calculate the average compounding rate. Now, this is another one of those calculations that we did in our prereq class. But it is just too common and useful not to go over again. Now, here's the situation. We have an investment, and we put an initial amount in, 15,000 for investment one and 5,000 for investment two. And we waited 10 years, and then boom, we got 25,447 for the investment one, about 11,300 for investment two. And we need to know which one had the better return. Well, first off, we can calculate for both of these investments the growth rate or the percentage change. You take the end amount, notice this is at the end of one year, divided by the begin amount, the initial amount we invested. Another way to think of these two terms end and begin in terms of financial terminology. This is the future value. That's the present value. We take those two, divide them, and then subtract one. That's our formula for percentage change. Now, there's other formulas for percentage change. They will give you the same exact answer. And this formula is shorter and easier to create. So there we go. I'm going to copy it down. I go to the last cell and hit F2 just to verify. And divided by begin, subtract 1, and boom, there it is. Now we can do the same calculation over here. And divided by begin, subtract 1, control enter. So we have two columns of percentage changes or growth rates. Now you might think that we could use the mean to calculate this. But compounding is a multiplicative process, not an additive process. This means the average function or the mean calculation will always overestimate. And actually, our textbook does a good job of mentioning this. you got to watch out. If you're in the financial industry and someone tries to use the arithmetic mean to represent an investment, it's always going to overestimate. The proper calculation is the geometric mean. Now, I'm going to show you two ways. If you know the begin and the end amount, and you know the total number of periods, then we have two different ways we can calculate the actual geometric mean or average compounding rate. And also, if you only have the percentage changes or growth rates, there is a separate formula we can use for that. Now, our formula, and this is straight from our prerequisite class, Business 210 for calculating this geometric mean. If we know the end, which is boom, and the begin, we take that amount, and we actually have to raise it to an exponent. But the exponent is 1 divided by the number of total periods. So in parentheses, 1 divided by total number of periods, close parentheses. And from that, we subtract 1. And when I enter it, there's the true average compounding rate or geometric mean. And we can clearly see that it is slightly smaller. Now we can do this for investment number two. We take the end amount divided by our begin amount, close parentheses. And by the way, we're forcing this division to calculate before our exponent. Because in Excel, exponents are calculated before division. Hey, that's a, not just Excel. That's regular math. And then we need to do another division, 1 divided by the total number of periods, and then subtract 1. So investment number 2, 0 0.08501. And we can clearly see this is smaller than the arithmetic mean. And now we have a measure that will allow us to compare our two investments in terms of return. Investment number two had a better return. Now, that's a pretty complicated formula. There is a brand new awesome function in Excel 2013 and later called equals RRI. And it wants the total number of periods, which is our 10, comma, and then it calls it present value and future value. The present value was the original amount invested, comma, the future value is the amount that we got after 10 periods. Now, if you know financial functions in Excel, they've been around a long time. And there's a lot of functions that use 
present value and future value as their arguments. This function is different. In all other financial functions, you have to represent cash flow out with a minus. But for some reason in 2013 when they invented this function, they didn't follow that same convention. So we just put the two numbers in as positives, close parentheses, and you got to be kidding me. That is a lot easier than this formula right here. We can do the same thing, RRI for investment number two. Total number of periods is 10, comma, present value. That's the amount we invested. Future value, that's the amount we withdrew after 10 periods. Close parentheses, Control, Enter. Now, both of these formulas work when you have the begin and end amount and total number of periods. But oftentimes, we don't have those numbers. We only have the percentage change or growth rate. And by the way, we're doing an investment example here. This works for population growth rates and all sorts of other rates of change. So think about that. When we calculate average, right, we actually just add them all up and divide by the count. So usually we're dealing with all of the individual numbers. Well, there's definitely a formula for that. The one caveat, though, is that we can't use the geometric mean function on the actual growth rates. We have to add 1 to each one of these to get the growth factor. So equals geo mean. And I would like to simply highlight all of these. But I really need to add 1. And if I can't add an extra column, watch this. I'm going to do an array calculation plus 1. Now, an array calculation in Excel means you're doing some calculation, whether it's math or comparative operator, on more than one item. And that is a range of values. By doing plus 1, you're telling Excel to add 1 to each one of the numbers in this range. Now, this is an array formula. So in order for Excel to understand correctly, we have to use that special keystroke, Control, Shift, and Enter. Now, for a second, we have a 1. But you could see the decimal part is exactly correct. But remember, when we enter an array formula with Control, Shift, Enter, we can only guarantee that Excel understood and that we entered it correctly by looking up to the formula bar. When you see your curly brackets, you know Excel understood this was an array calculation. Now I'm going to hit F2 because really we need to subtract 1 from it. And that's the complete formula. Now, this minus 1 is not an array calculation. It's just internally because geometric mean is spitting out a single number, and then we subtract 1. We still have to do Control, Shift, Enter, so the inside part of the geometric mean function understands. Control, Shift, and Enter. Now I can do the same calculation over here, geo mean. I highlight all the numbers. I need to add 1. I'm going to be tricky. I'm going to do an array calculation, close parentheses, minus 1. Control, Shift, Enter. Now, there we did an array calculation. Oftentimes, you do have space to just add a 1. So you can simply add an extra column and add 1, copy it down. And now, of course, equals geo mean, we simply highlight the percentage changes or growth rates already have 1 added. Minus 1. There's no array calculation here, so just Enter or Control Enter. Now, I want to prove that these are actually the correct average compounding rates. And the way we can do that is, guess what? If I take the initial amount, multiply it times this average compounding rate or geometric mean, and compound it the correct number of times, I should get exactly the ending amount. So you ready? equals, here's the start amount, times, in parentheses, 1 plus our compounding rate, close parentheses, and then we have to compound it so we care it 10 times. Enter, sure enough, I get exactly the correct answer. Now, we can also use the built-in function future value. It wants to know the period rate. That's this amount here per year, the average compounding rate, comma, total number of periods, 10, comma, payment is like when you're making monthly payments. We didn't. Instead, we threw in a lump sum and just let it grow. So we skipped this argument with a comma. 
Oh, and there's that present value. And you got to know cash flow. When you put the money into the bank, it is out of your wallet and into the bank. So you have to put a minus. That's our initial investment. We do not need the type argument here. The type argument is only when you have periodic payments. So we simply close parentheses and control enter. We get exactly the same answer. Boom, boom. Now we can do it for our second investment equals our begin amount times in parentheses 1 plus our geometric mean. And we have to raise it to the total number of periods. And boom, we get exactly the same answer. If we want to use Excel future value function, our compounding rate, that's actually a period rate. Our period is a year, comma, NPER 10. Skip payment, the present value, the cash is going out when we initially invested in the bank, 5,000 as a negative, close parentheses, and control enter. All right, so the geometric mean, we saw one, two ways to do it when we have the begin, end amount, and number of compounding periods. And we actually saw two different ways to do it if we have all of the growth rates or percentage change amounts. All right, next video, we'll talk about variation. All right, we'll see you next video.